Hi everyone, Francis McInerney with you once again with one of our future creators videos. It's our comprehensive system for managing at zettabyte scale. And today we're going to ask one of the hardest questions you will hear asked in industry, Intel. Is it the next Kodak? And has it had its Kodak moment? You will learn a lot today. This is what, if you're Intel's CEO, you've got to be thinking about. And if you're not thinking about this and you're running Intel, you are having your Kodak moment. The conventional wisdom on Intel, and you'll see this everywhere, is that it has to break out of its PC and server prison and identify the next big thing and be in it. Well, the future creator's insight on Intel is completely different. It's simple. To prevent itself from becoming the next Kodak, Intel must sell information surface monetization enablers that scale at the rate of cloud inflation and that interact across all three cloud membranes as future creators understand them and all platforms. Big question, can Intel do this? Does its supply chain model work just for starters? Is the old supply chain that Intel has used for the last 30 odd years still reliable, still work in this kind of environment? Does its vertical integration model work? You know, Intel is the last of the old, we design them and we make them uh, operations in integrated circuits. Intel's core information velocity, and you will see this data says no. No, it cannot happen. So management at Intel has some very serious questions to answer. Yes, folks, there's a Kodak moment happening here, and boy, they better get this right. Let's just look at the core data for the last 20 years. I like 20 year data because you can see things that are not immediately obvious if you just look at the last four or five years. The first thing we notice is that Intel's accounts receivable, days and accounts receivable, got better and better for a considerable period of time, until about 2008. Notice then, sales operations started to fail. Days of sales in receivables started to grow, which means the salespeople are not selling value or they don't have value to sell. One way or another, the customer is no longer recognizing, as it did in the first 10 years of this chart, what Intel's value to them is. At the same time, look at the inventory line and what you see is an ever weakening supply chain. This supply chain is not getting stronger. So yeah, it's been around for a long time, but it's not getting any better. And notice the payables data in the last year plus the first quarter of 2017, payables data has shot up. That means that Intel is forcing its suppliers to bank its deals. That is always one of the worst signs future creators can see. We never want to see that. Banks are banks, suppliers are suppliers. They're both strategic for totally different reasons, and if you confuse them, you're going to mess yourself badly. And it looks like this is what's going on at Intel. Now, let's look at something else. Here is the velocity of cash index and the velocity of capital index, and you have videos from me, video seminars on how those work. So I'm not gonna review the details here, but the most important thing is to notice that Intel's key indicators topped in 2011, only a couple of years after the 2008 uh, peak in receivables data, we have a reflection in overall cash and capital velocity. Intel got a management grade A minus at this period, and it had been a pretty, pretty top grade company for quite some time. But look at today, grade C. Grade C, folks, that's a huge fall in your management grade in a very short period of time and does not bode well. Now here's more disturbing data. Intel has entered the Edison Gap. We named the Edison Gap after Thomas Edison, who founded centralized R&D labs over a century ago. And the Edison Gap starts when your operating earnings no longer cover R&D expense. And what do we see here? Again, Intel's key indicators peaked in 2011. 
Today, it is spending more and more R&D money for less and less. That's the Edison gap. And indeed, in the first quarter, for the first time in, a, in these data, operating earnings did not cover R&D. So the picture from the data does not look good, and it's getting worse. Is this Intel's Kodak moment? I think it well may be. So if you're the CEO of Intel, you've got some big thinking to do. Now let's just start with Intel here on the left, the Moore curve. There it is, price performance of devices, dollars per MIPS, turning into MIPS per dollar. And uh, the effect the Moore curve has on the number of devices connected to the network. On the right-hand side, we're now in the tens of billions, and soon we'll be in the hundreds of billions. We have the mainframe era, fewer devices, much worse price performance than today. PCs, way improved price performance on the device, and of course, way more devices networked. The internet, an explosion of the number of devices, an incredible price performance improvement. And today we're in the era of rapid cloud inflation, and you have my seminar on how cloud inflation works. You know all the dynamics of that. But the key is that this number here, on the left times this one on the right unleashes an information surface. And that information surface, as you know, inflates at the rate of cloud inflation. And that is a sudden and dramatic increase in the dynamics of price performance on the left-hand side and the number of devices on the right. And if you're Intel, you've got to catch that wave. You just have to be there. You can't allow someone else to do it. You can't allow someone to turn you into a Kodak. The data, however, show that this is Intel's era here from around 1980 to 2011. And the Intel era is over. That's what the data say. And if you're Intel, if you're the CEO, if you're anyone on the C-level at Intel, you've got to be paying attention to these data. This is not even vaguely amusing for you. Now let's just look at the business of information surface inflation because it's so interesting in terms of its dynamic. We have the kilobyte era, followed by the megabyte era, followed by the gigabyte era, and the tetrabyte era. But at this point, the cloud exploded onto the scene. The cloud, as you all know from the seminars that I've done on the subject, is simply unlimited computing on that chart we saw previously in terms of price performance at marginal cost. We've never had computing at marginal cost. The Intel era was selling us computers we had to own. We owned everything. Now, of course, Intel's in the server business, the cloud server business, and it really should know that this is marginal cost computing and what the impact is, because you have had a rapid succession of these monster eras, petabyte, exabyte, and zettabyte today. And the information surface has increased spectacularly with the advent of the cloud. Processor offerings must constantly change as customer information surfaces inflate. That's the simple logic of this chart. And they must enable information surface monetization. And you've all gone through my videos on how that works. Most importantly, these processors must be key to accelerating customer information conversion into cash across all platforms. That is what the information surface dynamic says. And so now we understand what Intel is supposed to be doing. But this is the Intel era. The Intel era is gone. It's over. And the information surface is just unlike anything that Intel now serves. So let's just review one of the key pieces of cloud memory and interaction. You'll remember this from my video on the subject, so I'm going to be pretty quick about it, but it's straightforward. We have the three cloud membranes, the app membrane, the app enablement membrane, and the app delivery membrane. And there are seminars on each. Very strict rules apply to each and how they work and how they interact. But what you have is a monetization cloud membrane interaction envelope of a certain size today. And you have a monetizable 
cloud membrane interaction envelope that will inflate with the cloud tomorrow and will keep inflating. Very simply, the cloud membranes, as you'll remember, expand at the rate of cloud inflation. The cloud membranes always interact. Membrane interaction is always monetizable. The monetizable interaction envelope grows at the rate of cloud inflation. Successful business models expand their information surfaces to the cloud inflated membrane interaction envelope. And of course, if you're, if you're Intel, that's what you're enabling for your customers. These businesses identify the most profitable interactions and design everything back from these information surface membrane interactions. That's all Apple did. Apple did nothing else but this. So your information surface must inflate from here to here. Question is, where's Intel in this process? Honestly, I don't see Intel in this process. Is it the next Kodak? So Intel, this, you got it. This is a chart, straightforward. The numbers are there. It's not complicated. This is what you have to do. Key lessons for Intel. All Intel products must app enable information surfaces at zettabyte scale. Intel must lead customer information surface construction. It must build scalable cloud membrane interaction enablers. It's all a processor is for clients. It must ensure customers get maximum cloud monetization opportunities. Otherwise, why don't they buy a processor? Here's a new brand line, if you like, or a new message. We enable your apps at zettabyte scale. Intel has to ensure that its customers determine outcomes in their markets, something it's not doing today. What does the CEO have to do? What are the CEO immediate action items? Lose that PC server mindset. I call it the Kodak mindset. Enter the app enablement space. Review everything that supports that vertical integration, supply chain management, and rethink the whole organization from one end to the other. That's the key. For extra guidance on how to do this, we have our foundation series, and I'm going to just show you a few of the ones I think you should watch on this. Cloud information and you manage your information surface, information surface monetization, the key. Information velocity mapping so we understand where companies are performing. The Edison Gap, very important. And some case studies. Apple, of course. Panasonic, to show what can go really, really wrong. Cisco and IBM. You'll remember our Saving IBM video. Now, I've been future creating since 1976, and I've seen just about everything. Good, bad, and, and I've seen some real ugly stuff too. So we don't want you to be there. We want you to succeed. We want you to profit. So join us at Future Creators, and let's move your company forward. Do not have a Kodak moment. Thank you.